early morning to you. Well, good early morning to you is what I said. <laughs> How is everyone? Wonderful. Will you stand to your feet? Good. We're going to worship today. Let's open up in prayer. Father, we welcome you once again into this place. Father, I'm thankful for my Living Waters Chapel family that we can gather again in your house to praise and worship you. We don't take that for granted. Father, help us never to forget of your precious Holy Spirit that lives and abides in us, guiding us, encouraging us, leading us, Father. And now we lift up our hearts. We clear our minds of anything that may be occupying that space that needs to be yours right now, Father. So we dedicate our time to you once again this day. In your name we pray. Amen.
together. Let's sing the praise. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let praise arise. Let praise. Sing your name in the dark and changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise, let praise arise. We'll see you, we'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall, for fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh, 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 let faith, oh, let faith be a song that overcomes the raging sea. And let faith be a song that calms the storm inside of me. Oh, let it rise. We'll see you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh. sing this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise one more time this is what living this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise we'll see you break down every wall we'll watch a giant fall for fear cannot survive when we praise you the god of breakthroughs on our side forever lift him high with all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you.
hold fast to what is true and if the cross brings transformation then i'll be crucified with you because death is just a doorway into resurrection life and if i join you in your sufferings then i'll join you
come to you today. We praise you. We praise you because you are almighty. You are good all the time. You are gracious all the time. You are just all the time. Lord, you have loved us before the beginning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we come and we lay our burdens at your feet. We confess our sins at your feet. And Lord, we seek you and we ask for forgiveness. And we seek you and we praise you and we give you the glory because only you are the savior of this world and only you can forgive us, Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. May you be magnified. In your heavenly and precious name we pray. Amen. And blessed be the Lord God Almighty who reigns forevermore. Who reigns forevermore. Here at Living Waters Chapel, we love to praise the Lord. We love to worship, don't we? And I pray that it's always a haven of rest for you, a haven of restoration for you, refreshing whatever it is you need from God. I pray that every time you enter those doors, that your heart is open to what he, all that he has. Isn't God good? I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for this place. And would you greet one another right now? Show everyone that you are thankful for them. morning and greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus. We welcome each and every one in our early worship service this morning and those that are joining us online. And uh, I say early because I don't know about you, but it really feels like an early service this morning. And uh, we're so glad you're with us. You've adjusted your clocks and uh, you're here with us uh, in person to worship the Lord and those that have joined online that you've made time in your day uh, to come and join with us as well and uh, worship the Lord together. So we, we welcome you, those that are first-time guests and visitors, either here 
in the sanctuary, those online viewing for the first time. We thank you especially for making that effort uh, to be with us in worship, and we encourage those that are here in the sanctuary, if you'll take a Connect card, these are located in the uh, pockets on the backs of the chairs. There's one near you, and uh, there's a pen as well. So you can complete that card, take it out to the Connect Center at the close of our time of worship this morning, and we have a gift bag for any first-time worshiper. And we encourage those that are online, if it's your first time tuning in to us, that you would either message us or uh, call into the office uh, during the week and make contact with us. And we'd be happy to have record of your worshiping with us if you have questions, would like information about Living Waters Chapel, we would be happy to respond. Just by way of announcement, we want to uh, call attention to several things coming up this week. Our Cruisers Motorcycle Ministry is having their uh, planning meeting for the riding season. That's coming up this Friday on the 17th at 6 p.m. in Classroom 103. That's over in the office complex area, so if you have an interest in uh, Cruisers Ministry, we encourage you to be with us to help plan the schedule for uh, warmer months that are just ahead of us. And then we want to remind uh, the uh, kids hangout, uh, those uh, parents and the children in fifth and sixth grade, and parents, if you have a, a fifth or sixth grader and you'd like them to be involved in this uh, special Kids Connect ministry, uh, that's going to be Saturday, March the 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. here uh, in the church back uh, in the uh, education wing of the fellowship uh, building area. So please be aware of that, the 18th uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. for children in both 5th and 6th grades. And then we want to uh, <clears throat> encourage anyone who has not been baptized in water, we are planning a water baptism service for Sunday, April the 2nd. That is Palm Sunday, the Sunday before Easter. And uh, we are willing to do that in both of our services, the uh, early service at 8 a.m. as well as 10.30. And so if you or someone in your family has been talking about this and is interested, uh, we need to know that. So please do sign up or do contact the church office so we can prepare and plan. There are some uh, um, requirements uh, to, to qualify for that very important um, experience and an expression of worship and commitment to the Lord. So, all right. And we do want to thank you for your generosity and giving as uh, you give regularly and continuously to the Lord and honor him. Uh, <clears throat> your gifts and your tithe, uh, your financial support <clears throat> is so vital and important to ministry continuing here at Living Waters Chapel. Your prayer support, your volunteering, and uh, being involved is equally appreciated, and uh, we are so thankful for that. At this time, if you'll direct your attention to the screen, so we're going to view a short video before Pastor Chris comes to bring God's word. We are like clay, static, unrecognizable, nothing. A formless mass with no direction, no purpose, no meaning. We are like clay, pliable, movable, moldable. In the hands of the Creator, we can be changed, made beautiful, given life. Nothing becomes something extraordinary. The transformation takes time. The process is tedious, difficult, painstaking. But soon, we see the beginnings of something wonderful. The formless takes shape. The unrecognizable finds its identity. The meaningless is given purpose. From nothing comes beauty. We are like clay, each piece different than the next, given unlimited potential in the hands of the potter. This morning we are going to continue to look at our series of messages that I've just simply entitled Fresh Encounters. Uh, last week, uh, we uh, looked by way of introduction at what is an altar. And I just want to uh, 
uh, review that with us uh, because as we have uh, fresh encounters with God, uh, usually will center around an altar experience. And an altar represented a place where a person fully dedicated themselves to God. And every human heart has an invisible altar where the war between the spirit and the flesh rages. And when we surrender areas of our lives to the control of the Holy Spirit, we are in effect laying that area on the altar before God. And an altar is a place where we die to self and we find new life in Christ. And I reminded us that an altar, at an altar experience, we experience confession and forgiveness, change and transformation, consecration and closeness to God, communion of the saints, and commissioning into the world. And last week we looked at confession and forgiveness. And this morning I want to take a look at change leads to repentance and transformation. So at an altar experience, there is a change that takes place. And that change involves repentance. It involves transformation. So when you and I have a fresh encounter with God in our lives, these are one of the, one of the many things that takes place in our lives. By way of introduction, once we are in Christ, and I'm taking that phrase in Christ directly from some verses that we will look at in just a few moments. When we are in Christ, we are made new. And everything changes for us. So as you and I realize and recognize that we are in Christ, He desires to make us new. And because of that, everything in our lives should be changing. But the key thing that needs to take place, what you and I need to give permission, is this. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to make us new. That is something that you and I need to allow to take place. Why? Because uh, just because we find ourselves in Christ, you know, it's not like we, we flip a switch and all of a sudden everything changes. I mean, it does in, in, it does as we read it, but then we, we find ourselves walking it out and that's where it becomes a little bit challenging and a little bit, uh, Of a struggle. You see, because we need to allow the Holy Spirit to make us new. Our ideas, our perspective, our values, and actions should all be changing for the glory and honor of God. You see, growth in our relationship with Jesus requires that we change in knowledge, faith, And holiness. I don't care if you've been serving Jesus for longer than I've been alive. The reality is is that there are changes that are taking place within us. In our knowledge, in our faith, in our holiness. Hopefully each and every day we are allowing the Holy Spirit to make us new. Which means that we are allowing Jesus, to make us more like Him and less, less of us, less of us. Why? Because that invisible altar, 
The battle between the Spirit, what what the Word of God instructs us to do, what we know as followers of Jesus Christ we're supposed to do, and that battle of the flesh, where you and I need to die daily, which means that we are, in essence, having an altar experience. Because remember, at an altar, when you look at the altar in, in, in the Old Testament times, required sacrifice. Something or someone was going to die at an altar. And every time we have a fresh encounter with God, every time you and I open God's Word and we read His Word, and we allow His Word to penetrate our hearts and our minds, and we allow it to change how we live in our words, our thoughts, our actions. We are dying to self. Let's pray. God, over these next few moments, as we look at your word, may your word draw us closer to you. Give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying to us, and then the courage and the boldness to act upon it. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. We're going to be taking a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 11, through chapter 6, verse number 2. Uh, this is the, the in, in my Bible, this is the, this is the section title of the Ministry of Reconciliation. So we're going to just read this entire, uh, con- we're going to read this passage in its entirety, and then we will jump into what we have this morning. Beginning with verse number 11 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade men. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it is also plain to your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us, so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than what is in the heart. If we are out of our mind, it is for the sake of God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who has no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. 
For he says, in the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. So as we look at these particular verses, we see that these verses talk about change. We see that that these verses talk about uh, reconciliation, or reconciling ourselves to God, uh, reconciling ourselves to one another. And if you and I want to experience being uh, reconciled to God and, and, and being reconciled to one another, uh, there is uh, confession, repentance, forgiveness, all takes place within that reconciliation. It just does not happen by chance, but it requires an action. We saw in verse number 15, uh, excuse me, verse number 17, where it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is, in, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. This idea of a new creation. What does it mean to be a new creation? You see, when you and I become a new creation... Our whole being, our nature, our life and behavior is supposed to be changing. This verse says, in Christ. So that means when you and I find ourselves in Christ, things in our lives should be different. In our being, in our nature, in our our life, in our behavior. And you see, becoming a new creation involves repentance. Becoming a new creation involves repentance. So what does it mean? What does it mean for us as individuals to repent? What does that look like? You see, the word repentance in the Bible literally means the act of changing one's mind. Many of you are sitting next to people where you have attempted and you have tried To change their mind. Could be about a circumstance. It could be about a situation. You've used your best persuasion techniques. You've used your uh, best bait and switch tactics. But to no avail... You have not been able to change that person's mind. Or maybe sometimes you have been able to. But in reality, when it comes to the things of the heart, and for a lasting change to take place, Jesus is the only one who is able to truly change a human heart. So you see, this idea of repentance is the act of changing one's mind. It involves a complete change of orientation, involving a judgment upon the past and deliberate redirection for the future. And the Bible uses several Greek words, three Greek words used in the New Testament that help us understand the full meaning of repentance in the Bible. First one is metamelomio. It denotes a change of mind 
that produces regret or even remorse for wrongs done, but does not necessary, but not necessarily a change of heart and action. Think of it this way. We'll use a very simple, simple illustration here. Whether you are a child or a individual who is married or anyone who has been told this at one point in your life, there has been something that has just been freshly baked. And it is sitting on the counter. Oh, I don't know. What do we? Let's go with, what do I want to think about here in this moment? Let's go with warm chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, ah, yeah, that sounds pretty good, right? And you are told, do not eat the cookies before the meal. The person who has told you that has exited the room. And here is our opportunity. You go to grab that chocolate chip cookie. Whether it's your mom, your spouse, another adult, they come in at the moment you have your hand on the cookie. What are you doing? Well, obviously my hand is caught in the quote-unquote cookie jar. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. You walk away, put the cookie back. You're like, man, I really want that cookie. So you don't really have a change of heart and a change of action. You know, given the opportunity again, what would we do? Like if we really, really want something and there's not been a change of heart or a change of action, we're going after that cookie. Another example is, uh, another, another Greek word is the metanoio means to change one's mind and purpose as a result of knowledge. It's a little bit of a different meaning. So we're changing one's mind, one's purpose, as the result of, of our knowledge. So in the example of the chocolate chip cookie, if we would have two, three, four half a dozen chocolate chip cookies because they're warm and they go well with either milk or coffee or your other whatever, you know, whatever you're going to be drinking there. I'm, I'm, I'm going with milk. That's all I'm saying. I'm going with milk and cookies right there. All right. Oh, just so good. You know, anything coming out of the oven, just, mmm. There we go. Good thoughts. I better get back to my notes. I'm thinking too much about chocolate chip cookies. Warm chocolate chip cookies, that is. The idea of another Greek word, metanoia, describes true biblical repentance. And it's characterized by the following four elements. So this is what you and I want to be striving for. This is what you and I want to be doing. True biblical repentance. And true biblical repentance involves the following. It involves a sense of awareness of one's own guilt, sinfulness, and helplessness. It involves taking hold of God's mercy in Jesus Christ. It means having a change of attitude and action regarding sin. And it, it results in a radical and persistent pursuit of holy living and walking with God 
in obedience to His commands. That's what true repentance is. That's what true repentance involves. You see, in the Bible, repentance involves a complete and irreversible change of mind, heart, and actions. It involves a realization that our sin is offensive to God. It involves a determination to turn away from self to God. From the past to a future that is ruled by God's commands. Acknowledging that the Lord reigns supreme in our lives. You see, in the Bible, transformation means change or renewal. From a life that no longer conforms to the ways of the world, to the one that pleases and honors God. So you see, as we move from repentance... Repentance, true biblical repentance, means that there is a change that is taking place within us. There is a change of heart, there is a change of mind, there is a change of action or actions. We realize that What we have done, what we're participating in is offensive to God. And because of that, we are going to make a determination. We are going to make a change. And that is to turn away from whatever selfish desire that we are trying to fulfill that we know is offensive to God. And we're turning from ourself, our selfish desires, our way of living, and we're turning to God. We're turning from being ruled by our past to a future that is ruled by God's commands. And we acknowledge that God is reigning supreme in our lives. This idea of biblical transformation, this change, this renewal. It is accomplished by the renewing of our minds. The Bible is filled with verses that talk about having our minds renewed. It is filled with verses that that talks about what we should think about. So as you and I have our minds renewed, changed, there's this inward spiritual transformation that takes place. It takes place on the inside. And then it is visible through our outward actions. Biblical transformation is is accomplished by a life that bears fruit. Is your life bearing fruit? And it grows in the knowledge of God. Not only are we individuals where our lives are bearing fruit, but are we growing in the knowledge of God You see, because I believe as you and I grow in the knowledge of God, not just head knowledge, not just knowledge for the sake of having knowledge, but growing in the knowledge of God that it it affects our, our heart. It affects our mind. You see, that kind of that kind of knowledge where where we allow it to to go from just having knowledge to to transform our minds, to renew our minds, to, to transform our hearts, to renew our hearts. That's the type of knowledge that is 
producing fruit. Biblical transformation is accomplished by drawing near to God so that we will reflect His likeness. You see, you and I, we just don't draw near to God so that we can say, hey, I'm being more spiritual. But we draw near to God and He draws near to us so that you and I are able to go out into our world and make a difference for His honor and His glory. You see, transformed lives... Begin with the gospel message of Christ. The message of Jesus. What is the message of Jesus? The message of Jesus is the message of the cross. And it is in the power of God. This idea at an altar experience, a fresh encounter with God, it's a change that leads to repentance and transformation. As you and I read and study. God's word. You see, if we're just reading and studying God's word, that's great. That's knowledge. But as you and I read, study, and apply God's word to our lives, that's where the change, transformation takes place. That's where as we're reading God's Word, and we see an area where we may fall short, or we know that things are not right between us and God, that is when we need to make sure that we make things right between us and God. That's where repentance comes in. As I bring my thoughts to a close, at an altar experience, we encounter confession and forgiveness, change and transformation, consecration and closeness to God, communion of the saints, and commissioning into the world. Our desire, our goal, should be to continue to fully dedicate ourselves to God. What does it mean to fully dedicate ourselves to God? It means that you and I are all in for Him. We are going to surrender every area of our lives to the control of the Holy Spirit. You see, that's what it's about. Are we allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our lives? Or are we resisting the Holy Spirit? Are we ignoring the Holy Spirit? Are we saying no to the Holy Spirit? You see, it is, it is as we surrender, as we say yes, that's where the change occurs. That's where the growth occurs. Once again, the reality is is that every human heart has an invisible altar where the war between the flesh and the spirit rages. And as you and I 
put to death our flesh, the spirit will flourish. As we put to death our flesh, that means as we find ourselves in our building our relationship with the Lord. And we become aware of thoughts, actions, maybe words that we're speaking that displease God. What do we do in those moments? And when we circle it back to Repentance. Are we willing to repent? Are we willing to have a change of mind, heart, and actions? Do we realize that what we're doing is an offense to God? Are we going to determine to turn away from ourselves and to God? From the past to a future ruled by God's commands, acknowledging that the Lord reigns supreme over our lives. This is the choice that we need to make. I'm going to invite you to just make where you're at a place of prayer. In these closing moments, I want to give opportunity for the Lord to search our hearts. God, we have heard your word. And now, God, in this moment, we ask you to search our hearts. God, the idea of of change, the idea of repentance, the idea of allowing transformation to take place in our hearts and in our lives. God, to become the, the people that you want us to become, to become the individual that you want us to become in you. Once again, God, that that process can be many times a difficult, challenging, painful process. God, when we decide to let go of the past and our old way of living, and we say yes to you, God, may we experience all that we can experience in you. God, that our desire would be to become more like you, made in your likeness, in your image, bearing fruit, growing in the knowledge and the grace of you for your honor and your glory. I pray this prayer of blessing over each and every one of us. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you, that the Lord would make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you, that the Lord would turn His face toward you and give you peace. Because of you, Jesus, and the hope of heaven, we believe and we know the best is yet to come. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we will be saying goodbye to our online audience. Online audience, God bless you and have a great week.